Welcome to this video about UART hacking. Uh, the beginning of this video will start with a brief introduction into UART and then into a practical hacking lab where I will show and explain how to perform a basic UART attack. Uh, first is a reminder slash disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. Hacking is illegal and you can get into a lot of trouble with it. So just stay ethical and hack only what you are authorized and allowed to hack. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It is commonly used for debugging embedded devices because it allows developers direct access into the firmware running on an embedded device. The data is transmitted one bit at a time and uses stop and start bits to signal beginning and ends of messages. Because of this, it has relatively low um, transfer speeds. And because the protocol is asynchronous, it uses what is called a baud rate to match the transfer speeds between two devices. Um, later in the practical hacking, we will look more at what a baud rate is and why it is needed. Um, there are a few common baud rates. Other baud rates can be found online and there are also downloadable tools to help you find a baud rate when you're testing a device. So why is it important to test UART? It's important because it at the very least usually shows valuable data about the device when it is booting. UART is very noisy on boot because it'll output a lot of the booting information because it is used for debugging as a developer. It interfaces directly with the device. So if you have physical access with the device, you interface directly with it. Um, it can often be an easy way to get a shell because if developers forget that they were using this debugging version, um, this type of debugging, then they might leave it open and you will just get a root shell because that's what developers were using to debug it and fix their product. Spotting UART. Um, UART is often three to four pins on a board. As you can see in the picture, it's four pins. Um, they're also sometimes little metal pads that are in place of the holes in the pins. Sometimes the UR interfaces are labeled with TX, RX, G, and VCC. TX, RX, and G stands for transmit, receive, and ground. Lastly is the tools that will be used in this video. Uh, one is the multimeter. Then we have a USB to UART. Then you just need some basic jump wires. And then for software, we're mainly going to use Kali Linux, which will come installed with the software that we need. And the links will be in the description for all hardware used in this video. Now we will get into the actual hacking of the device. Here, this is uh, a tiny TP-Link router. Um, the link to buy this thing is in the description of the video. And as you can see here, this is the same UART from the image in the presentation at the beginning of the video. And when trying to hack UART, the first thing I like to do is find the ground for the UART. And then from there, we can find out which one of these is actually the transmitter of the UART and then we can wire it up to our computer. So in order to find the ground we will use a multimeter set to continuity mode and then with this mode we can change it so it'll let out a noise when we find the ground and then we can just use our probes and test around for what gives us a noise. 
as you can see, all these big things of metal give us a noise, but also this hole in the UART. So we know this spot is the ground on the UART. Now that we've found a ground and we can use any of those grounds, we can switch the multimeter to voltage. And now we can try to listen and we're just going to check the voltage by with the multimeter to see which port is the transmit. So because UART is very noisy on boot up, we want to turn on the device. And then as we can see here, this port stabilizes and then fluctuates. So that's a really good sign that that may be the transmitting port. If we check the next one, it's just zero. So that's probably the listening one. We know this one's the ground. And then when we check this one, this one should eventually stabilize. So this is a VCC, this is the voltage one. So this will keep a relatively stable voltage. So we know the first port is our transmitting one. So we would want to hook up our receiving wire to that. Now that we've identified the transmit, receive, and multiple grounds on our target device, we're ready to hook up our USB to UR. So in order to do that, we first need to wire up the USB to UART. So here's what the end that we will jump plug our jumper wires into looks like. So the first wire with the arrow, this is our ground wire. So our ground goes to ground. The fourth wire is our transmit. So our transmit will go to the receive on the target device so that the target device can receive the commands that we transmit to it. And then the fifth wire here is our receive wire so that we can receive the commands that the target device is transmitting or outputting. So to get the best connection, best case scenario, you would solder these pins to the board or you would solder another set of pins to the board and connect the jumper cables that way, or there are probes that you can connect. Um, this device doesn't require it, and it's just easier and quicker to set it up without using the soldering. So I found that this USB port is usually pretty good to get the ground wire in. I usually just place it up in here and it'll stay. So now that we have our ground wire secured, we're going to take our transmit wire and we are going to connect it to the receive on the target device and this would be a lot easier we soldered everything and everything stays in place but as long as you just make sure that when you hook it up to your computer it doesn't move around you will be fine now we're just gonna take the USB end of our USB to your so this end, we're just going to plug it into our computer and then start up our virtual machine. And then I'll show you the commands that we use to interface with this device. Okay, so now that we have our UART all wired up, we can open up our Kali Linux virtual machine. And here I'm just in the terminal. And what I recommend to do is just come over here if you're using VirtualBox, check that you have selected your USB to UART because that's caused me some frustration when I forget and I don't understand why my 
commands aren't working. So this is the command that we're going to use. I actually have it saved right here. So this is a command called screen. And then we're selecting which USB device. So in this case, it's USB 0. And then here is the baud rate. So this is the baud rate of our target device. There are tools that you can use that will automate the process of finding the baud rate. There are also common baud rates that a lot of devices use. If you have the incorrect baud rate, you will not get human readable output. So it's important that you get the correct baud rate. Now what I like to do is I like to run the command and as we can see, nothing is appearing on the screen right now. Now, once we connect our target device to power, as you can see, we're starting to get some boot information from the device. So this is all the information coming out of that little router that we hooked up to our UART. This is all the information that's coming through the UART transmit port as it boots up. Now, in a little bit, it will stop booting up and we will be able to see that we actually have a shell here. And if you guys know anything about Linux, the hashtag sign is usually a good sign that you have a root shell. But we can check this by echoing the user, which tells us that we are a root. We can't use normal commands like who am I or ID because you have to remember these are embedded devices. They're stripped of a lot of commands that they don't find necessary. So from here, now we have access to this embedded Linux device and the file system. So for example, we could go to the etc directory and list out its contents. And we can see some interesting uh, files that we might want to look into more and dig deeper in. I will actually go over a video of firmware extraction, analysis, and reverse engineering. And actually, if you run the processes command on this device, you'll notice something interesting. This is a backdoor that I currently have running on this device. So I'm also going to do a video going over how to create that backdoor, how to connect to it, and how we can expand upon it. So that's the whole video. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any video ideas, or anything you just want to say. Thank you for watching.